Hi, folks. Hi. Hi. Thanks for staying uh, staying with it uh, with it today. Um, my name is Jeremy Ince, and I'm regional manager with Charity Bank. So, uh, essentially, what what my role is is to work with charities and community groups uh, to help um, help them evaluate whether or not a loan, which is what Charity Bank provides, is right for their organisation as part of their funding mix. And also right from the bank uh, perspective in terms of uh, the risk of making the loan to make sure we got our money back. So I'm going to uh, share my screen, run through a short presentation with you now that's going to talk to you a bit about Charity Bank and who we are and what we do. And then more importantly, I'm going to focus on some real life case studies about organisations that have actually used loan finance very successfully. Uh, in and around the, the the Yorkshire area, I think I think all the case studies I've, I've, I've tried to pick are all ones from that you'll be familiar with from in and around uh, around around the North Yorkshire region. So uh, just bear with me a sec while I get the tech going. Great. Okay. So first of all, a little bit of information about Charity Bank. We're an ethical bank. So and that all sounds very good, but what does that really mean? Well, um, we only do two things. We take deposits and we're, uh, a you know, we're registered with the PRA so that your money is guaranteed within the, within the regulatory limits up to £85,000. And we take that money and we match it with, with some of our core capital. And we lend that money to charities and community groups to help support their social mission, mainly for capital projects and buildings, uh, buildings acquisition, buildings refurbishment, building construction. Um, so it's mostly property related stuff that we do, although we are launching a smaller unsecured loan fund probably early next year to help help some of the, with fund some smaller projects and groups. And we're owned by charitable trusts and foundations. So every one of our shareholders is, is either a charitable trust or a foundation. So essentially all, all the, the loans that we make and the deposits that we take, you know, any financial surplus goes back to those, those charitable trusts and foundations, our investors st stays within the sector. So essentially a bank, for the sector, the charity sector, that's owned by the charity sector. We're, we're, we're quite old fashioned in that we still operate, you know, uh, on a relationship basis. So my, my role is to work with clients right from the outset when they have a first stage inquiry, right the way through the project and on an ongoing basis. So, um, you know, a, a, a critical friend, if you like, there to support you in, in good times and, and, and bad. Um, so why on earth might a charity think about using a loan? Well, I'm a, a charity tree, trustee myself of a local scout um, campsite and activity centre in, in Ilkley. And we've, we've undertaken development projects. And I have to say that a loan wouldn't be the first, first uh, top of my um, funding priorities, you know, purely because of the fact that it does need to be repaid. But many charities have have used loan finance um, and, and why would you do that well i guess you might have got 90 percent of the way there with your funding target and, and need a loan to get you over the line because you've exhausted every other 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 available avenue so close you know last brick funding to to close the gap as it were uh invariably we work in partnership with, with most of the large grant funders, particularly on capital projects. And having a loan will often encourage a grant funder to come on board because it makes their grant pot go further. So it's, it's, it's generally part of a, what's called a blended mix of finance, i.e. mix of loans, grants, and or donations. Generally, it's to support diversification and investment in new services. Um, to support income generation and sustainability to help charities reduce their reliance on grants and donations. You know, but they do need to be repaid. 
as such, they're generally tied to income generation and they're a call upon your future revenue. So you need to, trustees need to be pretty certain that 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 when borrowing money, the income from that investment is going to be enough to repay the, the loan. But we try to tailor make the loan package so it is affordable. And if I don't think it's viable or I don't think it's the right thing, then, you know, part of my job is to talk to charities and say, look, I don't really think this is this is this is for you guys. Um, our loans are quite large, uh, typically between 100,000 and, and 4 million pounds. But that does enable us to fund some quite large capital projects. I've talked about flexible repayment. It's like a mortgage. You know, when you're buying your house, quite often charities will be thinking that, well, actually, we've been renting our premises for years and with no security of tenure. And wouldn't it be a good idea rather than to rent to buy? And sometimes because interest rates are particularly low at the moment, then the actual cost of buying a property is less than what, what you pay in rent. So this sometimes makes sense just from a basic financial perspective. The loan can be repaid up to 25 years and there are no early repayment penalties if, if, if you repay early. So we wouldn't um, penalise a charity for being successful. Uh, there are other costs of borrowing. There's arrangement fees, there's legal fees, there's valuation fees. You know, one of the important things to remember is that, um, you know, we have to protect our savers uh, money and our investors money. So we will take a mortgage over the property that we're lending against. So if the charity defaults on the loan, then we do have recourse to that property. So, you know, it's a serious undertaking. And before entering into a mortgage, any, any charity and, and charity commission rules is required to take independent advice. Um, so that's, that's a bit about the loans themselves. Uh, benefits of borrowing. Um, it's unrestricted funding. I haven't got a restricted pot either. So at the moment, there's no restrictions on capital. So, you know, I'm not like a grant funder where I've only got a million pounds a year to, to give out. And once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, we've got a pretty big balance sheet. So, um, um, you know, if, if, if it's right and, and the charity are happy and, and, and the bank's happy, then there's no restrictions as vis-a-vis -vis not having enough, enough in, the, in the pot. So what do we look at when considering a loan? Four, four things. As an ethical bank, we're keen to ensure that the project is, will have a strong social impact and will make a difference in the communities where we're making the loan. Um, we only lend to charities and community groups. We don't lend to private businesses or privately owned companies. Is it affordable? Has the charity got you know, good financial management, good leadership? Do the board, do the management team know what they're doing? And lastly, you know, what is the property worth? Is it going to be enough to cover the loan if everything goes wrong? Just to reassure you on that point, I've been doing this job for over 10 years now and, well, made many, many millions of pounds worth of loans to charities in the, the, the north. And we've never had a single default and have never enforced on any of our security. So it's, um, you know, it's, uh, I think partly that's because we're quite cautious, partly that's because charity trustees are very prudent. And I think partly when things do go wrong, charities uh, and communities get behind the projects and make sure that, 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 that they, they don't fail. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, and it's working with charities because you know things things are you know things have been difficult for many of our borrowers, particularly during the pandemic, and we've worked with them, agreeing capital and interest holidays, uh, being flexible until such time as you know they've been able to reopen and restart services. Um, the last thing I want is for, for any charity that we're supporting to get into difficulty. So. Let's let's look at a few case studies. Um, you know, folks, I'm not I can't see the chat button box at the moment, but if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, tap away if there's anything as I'm speaking that, that, that springs to mind. And um, 
Joanne's kindly, kindly collating those and we can we can run through run through those at the end. But, you know, it's a, a relatively small group. So if you want to go off mute and ask a question, then um, please don't 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 be shy. OK, let's let's look at a few case studies then. So New Earswick Bowling Club. Um, this is a, an organization based in the New Earswick area of York. They um, are a privately owned members club. So they're not, uh, and people go there and, and do, do um, indoor bowling. But they also, you know, run a lot of community-based activities and are very engaged with the local community. So it's um, no one's, no one's, no one's in there uh, for private profit, and, and the com committee are all unpaid members. But their heating and lighting system was very outdated, very inefficient, and it was going to cost one hundred and fifty thousand pounds to replace it, which was for a what is a relatively small club, was a big sum of money. They managed to raise half of the costs themselves uh, and through grants, but they were still very short. And they borrowed another £75,000 from us to, to install the new, new LED lights, new air source heating system. The benefits of which, in terms of energy savings and cost savings, uh, more than covered the loan repayments. So they're now that, that loan has now been satisfactorily repaid. And the membership and the club have enjoyed uh, the benefits of, 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 of playing in a much warmer and better lit environment. Unlike many grant funders, we will fund faith based projects. So that's not just Christian churches, that's um, I've, we fund the, all faiths and none. Um, I think the important thing for me when looking at a, 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 a loan for a faith-based organisation is that to make sure that the, the project that they were supporting has some wider community outreach and engagement. So, you know, it, it, it's not just about the building or the church, it's about how that church will be used for the community. Um, oh, and we've got a, an organisation here, or a church, uh, evangelical church that's based in um, the northeast up in Sunderland. So it's just just north of York, Yorkshire, I guess. Uh, but the church had a big plot of land at the back and they wanted to build a community hall. But they didn't have enough money to do it. The, the, the membership put some money towards it. Uh, but they needed to borrow something to make sure it may bring it to fruition. And we gave them a loan that helped build a fabulous community hall at the, at, the, at the side of the church and a meeting rooms that was used for old people's luncheon clubs, mums and babies group, children's nursery, essentially lots of things that brought people from the community into the church, which was, I suppose, great for the community because they had a lovely community building to use but also great for the church because it encouraged people to engage with uh, engage with, with church where they hadn't previously dared to visit. Church membership grew up, voluntary grew, voluntary giving increased, and the church has been able to service the loan repayment satisfactorily for several years now and grown. So, you know, it's a, a, a real win. I've also funded a... a Sikh community hall, a Buddhist temple, so lots of um, diverse and 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 and, and different faith groups. Because actually, so much of, of of charity work is actually you know rooted in in faith. Here's you know a, a much larger capital project, Coast and Vale Community Action, which are based over in Scarborough. Um, they're an Infrastructure support body, you know, in, uh, you know, similar to Community First Yorkshire in the way that they work with community groups to help support the the, the community and voluntary sector. But they operated um, from small, very dilapidated premises that were no longer fit for purpose, and they managed to secure significant capital grant funding to build this wonderful building you can see on your screen. Um, 
in the middle of Scarborough. And they borrowed a million pounds from us to help make that happen. So it was, you know, it was a big loan and a very big project for, for Coast and Vale and for Scarborough itself. But it, and it was funded by a mix of grants and loans. Uh, and it's now a very successful and thriving community hub. More importantly, the income from the surplus space within that building that's led to a whole portfolio of community groups, local authority tenants. It's a, it's a thriving and, and busy community building. Helps cross fund much of their social and mission driven activities. Um, and gives them a, a long term sustainable income and has enabled them to reduce reliance on grant funding and on uh, local authority contracts, making you know, them a much more stable and secure organization vis-a-vis -vis their finances and the future. Um, another Scarborough project I probably wanted to show within these case studies, you know, the diversity of the different things that, that we've, we've funded. Uh, this is a small um, arts and heritage charity. It's a place that you can, it's almost, it used to operate from effectively a, a shop on the back road behind the, the, the front at Scarborough. And it was a, a museum that, that, that showcased Scarborough's, you know, very longstanding and proud maritime heritage. Lots of um, books about seafarers and, and the sea. You know, a really interesting afternoon you can spend there. But the challenge they had was that they operated from rented premises. And every year when the rent was due, you know, they relied on donations from people that, that, that went to visit the shop and small grants or not the shop, the museum. And it was really tough for them to cover their, their, their rent each year. Big, big, you know, panic each time that, you know, the, the annual rent was coming up to scrabble around and find the necessary funding. And they thought, well, there must be a better way. So they thought, what can we do? Why don't we look to try and buy our own building? Which is what they did. Um, they bought uh, an adjacent or a nearby property that actually had a flat up on the first floor, uh, which they let very successfully as uh, holiday accommodation. And that generates a long-term income that covers the loan repayments. So now they own their own building and they don't have to pay rent and the rent that they receive covers their, covers their mortgage. You know, the numbers balanced because, because it was a capital project, they were able to go to various trusts and foundations and, and secure a very big deposit towards the purchase. So essentially they only needed to borrow half and because of that they were borrowing half and had half in grants and donations um, the, the numbers all stacked up and balanced. And I suppose the risk is that the flat could perhaps be vacant, but it's in a nice part of Scarborough and it's got nice views and it's, it's been, been well used and it's been busy. Community housing is another area where we've been um, very busy over the past few years in helping to fund uh, the cost of new homes for the benefit of the community. So Hudswell Community Charity, it's a small village in a beautiful location uh, up in North Yorkshire. Uh, and they had the challenge of lots and lots of second home ownership, uh, holiday homes in the, in the town. I'm sure people will, uh, will, will probably empathize with that. And people from within the village, you know, the children and older people and whoever was wanted to try and buy a house in the town, it was really, really difficult to, 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 to purchase a property because they were very expensive to live in such a beautiful place. So the village charity said, well, how can we really help people from within who, who who've rooted in the community of limited means afford to live in the town? So they owned a plot of land that was used by a horse uh, and they decided to build three homes for rent to people within the community. Uh, they leveraged that with some of their own money and some grant funding from the local authority, from the community housing fund. And 
uh, along with a £250,000 loan from ourselves, built three beautiful stone bungalows or stone properties for rent at affordable rate rent to people within the community. So that produces a long term income for the charity. It's got a long term asset and those homes are going to remain in community ownership for perpetuity at affordable rent. So I know there's lots of groups out there looking at uh, community housing schemes, and this is a, a good a good case study um, uh, of how loans can fit as part of the mix, you know, because yeah, property and building houses houses is an expensive uh, business, so invariably uh, a loan is required as part of the mix, and invariably grant funders will expect some level level of bank borrowing within there to help spread spread their grant grant funding further. Okay. Uh, we do fund an awful lot of supported housing. So that's people with additional needs. And the Young Women's Housing Project, this is an organization based in Sheffield provide help and support to women that have been subject to domestic abuse. And they rented their premises from the local authority and the local authority kept threatening them with taking it back for other purposes or putting the rent up. So they decided to purchase their own premises, saving on the rent and giving them security of tenure. Buying their own building and using some of their reserves as a deposit enabled them to save on rent and gave them security of tenure. So, you know, relatively straightforward. Part, a large part of that property is actually rented to service users, women within the building that receive housing benefit and the housing benefit pays the loan back to Charity Bank. Yeah, so it's been a, uh, a very worthwhile and interesting project and organisation to work with. Oh, that's first stop in Darlington. They're a homeless charity that we again lent them money to uh, buy their own own premises. But you know, it's a, it's a real partnership. You know, working with organisations that we work with. Um, so uh, yeah, I've still had many a happy visit up to to first stop to see how they've been getting on. And I think we lent that money about five years ago, so their their loan is now well on its way to being repaid. I think that's you know that's the end of my formal part of my presentation. Hopefully, that's given you a, a, a bit of a flavour for for the kind of organisations that we've funded and how loans might be used as part of the funding mix for a capital project. Um, I guess it's over to you guys now. So if you want to, uh, I don't know if, if if you all come off mute, it might. Uh, I don't know quite. We've how got many. we've got one question in the in the chat box already, Jeremy. Um, from Anne Louise. Hi, Jeremy, what interest rate do you charge? Good question. The interest rate is certainly competitive with commercial lenders. Uh, generally speaking, our rates range between probably 2 and 4% above bank base rate. So, um, important to remember that interest rates can go up and down and we're historically very very low levels so it's quite possible that that the interest rates could go up and you need to take into account of that as, as in terms of your scenario and risk planning just as interest rates can go up on your mortgage on your domestic property okay, is that okay and louise is that do you want to come back to Jeremy on that one? No, I don't think so. Um, Helen's got a hand up. Yeah, I was just intrigued by what you were saying at the beginning, Jeremy, because obviously um, it's relatively low risk, really, for you to lend money on property. Yeah. Because you've got an asset. But you were saying at the beginning that you're going to be uh, lending on projects. Well, 
unsecured lending so it could be projects it's you know it's not going to be asset our traditional asset back lending we've had some uh, additional investment from one of uh, one of our our trusts and foundations that said you know we think that charity bank should be doing more to support the the charity and voluntary sector and there's a there's a there's a real need here uh and it's a blended finance of loans and grants um so it, it, yes it's for projects it's for doing things that were necessarily uh, there isn't an asset there or charity hasn't got a, a big deposit to put towards a towards a, a property purchase so you'd be looking at a very robust business plan and a way yeah. of payment would you would you vary the um the 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 length of the term of the loan it's, yeah it's tends to because it's unsecured lending it, it it's 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 tends to be a shorter term so it's it's likely to be up to 10 years but there's perhaps some quite quite flexible repayment options and it includes some grant so uh you know it's um mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the other question what to ask you was about impact i mean how how do you um how do you ask for impact to be shown do you have kind of a particular kind of um I try and keep it relatively like touch because the vast majority of organizations we work with are registered charities they'll often be providing information for existing grant funders or local authority contracts so kind of replicate that um, and vast majority of time it's pretty straightforward you know like the impact you know that uh, an obvious like the impact of say for example hudswell in having you know community houses will be maybe details of the tenants or the lettings policy you know it's something that they have already try not to create a whole layer of additional reporting and monitoring because you know life's complicated enough already without having to add add to charities burdens by with our, by another funder and again we don't tend to have a, a a long application form that you fill in it's more about picking up the phone and saying this is our idea do you think a loan would mit, was fit as part of the mix and we'll go from there would there be any advantage, you know, if you, if if um, someone was applying for a loan to actually be an account holder with Charity Bank, so that the Charity Bank account was was with Charity Bank? Good question. We're not a clearing bank, so we don't provide current accounts. We just take deposits and make loans. So uh, you can't actually have a bank account with us per se, but you know you can. A lot of charities do actually put surplus cash with us because. AR rates are quite good and they like to see, you know, their, their money being used for social purpose and, and within to support the wider sector. So, you know, why wouldn't you? And and it's protected. So, uh, yeah. Um, but there's no necessity to bank with us. It's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and, uh, the lady who asked the question to begin with, I've lost her name, Anne Louise, um, has come back and said, "Thanks, Jeremy, that's helpful." So, mm. so yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it's uh, a, you know, it's in terms of rates, it's very affordable, particularly compared with you know some of the. Okay, uh, Caroline, can you have your hand up? I did, uh, Jan. Thanks a lot. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, um, Caroline. Nice to see you again. And you as well. Been a um, while, but I guess it's been a while for everybody. It must have been, yes, a huge number of years ago. Um, I suppose, firstly, I thought the housing um, areas you covered were really interesting. And I just think that's something that, you know, we, we could usefully look at in the counties. A lot of issues coming up about community housing, and we are keen to be working with the LEP for some co-funded investment if possible. So that's maybe something we keep in touch about. Um, but beyond that, my question was really, are there particular quest sort of issues that loan funding can raise for grant funders? Does it make them feel a bit edgy about their money going in alongside the loan money? Um, is there more to be done to show that all the risks are mitigated and there's a strong financial case, et cetera? You know, where where are the where are the sort of pressure points when you're also applying for a grant alongside a loan, or if there are any? Well, interestingly, I had a uh, ran this similar workshop to this with the, the regional teams for the National Lottery Community Fund probably wow. last week. So they were keen to keen to learn more about 
social investment and how it fits with um, might fit with grant funding, particularly for capital, because they've got less grant funding around for capital projects. And so for grant funders, social investment's great because it actually makes their grant pots go further. Because yeah. if you can mix grant and loan, you're effectively doubling the size of, 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 of your impact for the same amount of grant. Um, and also a lot of um, grant funders, particularly the likes of, say, Homes England, when we're looking at um, uh, when we're looking at community housing, really take a lot of comfort from the fact that charity banks been in and done some robust due diligence, gone through the figures, gone through the governance, and they'll think, Ooh, actually, we've, we know this organisation is probably well run and probably got some quite good financial disciplines and good financial reporting because otherwise charity bank wouldn't have agreed to the loan. And sometimes it's chicken and egg. You know, you can start, you've got a great project and you won't, you know, you think, oh, I really need some grant funding and I really need some loan funding. But actually coming and talking to us at the outset, quite often I'll do like an indicative offer of support that says, yes, as part of this, this project will provide half the loan funding and then they go away and get half the grant funding from somebody else who say yeah I'll, I'll top it up to make it happen okay that's great yeah thanks really interesting that okay thanks caroline uh, nige um hello jeremy and joanne um Hi. we're looking potentially at putting solar panels on our village hall now, the Village Hall is a charity. We own the building. Um, charity buildings have to stay within the charity, um, charity remit. So how can you take a mortgage on that if we, are, if we ask you for a loan? Because it has to stay in the, chari in the charity sector. You're on mute, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Charities are allowed to give mortgages over land and building. Um, but clearly it's a, many charity trustees would feel nervous in, in doing that. Um, depending on the amount that you want to borrow, it might be easier to, to there are other providers that, that do unsecured loans. So, Depending on the numbers, you know, it might be, might be, that might be something that that key fund might be interested in. Just depends. Um, don't know how much are the solar panels costing. Well, it's only in a feasibility study at the moment, mm. but we're looking at something like fifteen thousand possibly. But before we could have that done, we need a new roof. Yes. Um, but so the 1930s asbestos containing tiles. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, so we're looking at something like 50, possibly 60,000 for that. Yes. Yeah. Well, a long term mortgage might fit as part of the funding for that project. Um, you know, it depends what the savings on your solar PV are and what, what your income streams are like from your lettings. And, you know, uh, yeah, those yeah. are the kinds of questions that we, we would we would ask as part of our what what a lender would call as due diligence, but really it's just understanding the numbers. Yeah, we're just in the very early stages of it. Mm. Thank you. No, thank you. Thanks, Nigel. Any more questions? No, doesn't look like it. No, Joe, can I ask a question? Yes, Carol. <laughs> Yeah, it just partly picking up on on the on um, the previous question about security. Um, if you're looking at a large loan, say you were, you know, I'm I'm talking like a six figure loan, capital mm -hmm. loan for a capital project, but the organisation doesn't own the land, but they have a long term secured lease on it. How does that work in terms of you being able to put a charge or security against a loan? Uh, a lot will depend upon the terms of the lease. So we'd get, a, you need, okay. we'd need to get a lawyers to look at the lease. So, um, and how long, because a lease is effectively, you know, means you've got 
you've got the you've you've got the rights to rent that property at an agreed rate for a certain amount of time, uh, and that lease will have a value depending on what the rent is and and how long the lease is. But typically, lenders would 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 require you to have a of a lease of of probably forty years or more. Okay. So I don't yeah, know what no, you, that's what, fine. I don't know what your lease term is. Well, it's the the projects are at the point of negotiating yeah. lease terms on a new lease in order to be able to develop the capital project, and they're also yeah. looking at acquiring land. So, part of the land acquisition will be purchase land i think which they will own but then the other part of the land will will be yeah. leased so it's a bit complicated so it's yeah. just so from my point of view just about the principle as as, of how it would work it's possible the long as possible as long a term as possible uh would be would be my response to that so that you've got because it needs to because the, the the lower the rent and the longer the lease means that that it's worth more of security and more chance of um, managing to secure a loan against that asset um but you know, one of the yeah. things that we would we would commission is would be a surveyor to to tell us what they think the property would be worth upon completion. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Carol. Anybody else? Any questions? No. Jeremy, have you got anything else to add to what's already been? No, all I would say is I'm going to just share my screen again that's got my contact details on. And if people want to pick up offline or have got any specific projects they want to talk about, then, you know, please do make contact. Um, often ha happy to uh, engage in an informal discussion at an early stage or and or signpost you to other people if it's not something that we can we can uh, assist with. Thank you for your time today. It's been a, a great pleasure.